Before we get started, I have a handout that I'm going to pass out. Um, the stuff is separate from the PowerPoint. Um, some drills that I'm going to be talking about that we do um, with the offensive line, with the running backs, with the quarterbacks <coughs> every day. So I'm going to pass this out so y'all can have to look at it. If I do not have enough, uh, I have my email up here. Um, you can shoot me an email anytime, and I'll get it back to you as soon as possible. Um, state championships you see up here, 94-09, 10 14 that has nothing to do with anything that I've done. Um, we have a lot of good players, a lot of good tradition that's come through Wallace Rose Hill. Um, I have a quote down here that I like, and this is by Coach Bear Bryant. He says, it's not the will to win that matters. You know, if I ask you in here right now how many coaches want to win, all of you raise your hand. State championships, conference championships, 10 plus games. Everybody has that will in them. But the most important part of the quote, it says, is that it's the will to prepare to win that matters. So everybody has that winning attitude and wants to get it done, but it's the preparation that goes into it. The coaches' meetings, spending time with the kids, teaching fundamentals and techniques, all those things are important in winning games. Before we get started, I have a uh, story I want to tell you real quick, and it deals with football. Any of you ever heard of fart football? Well, there was this man and this woman, and they were laying in the bed and they just went to sleep. And a couple of minutes went by and the man farted. He said, touchdown, 7-0. Woman said, what are you talking about? He said, it's fart football. You never heard of the game? She said, no. So they went back to sleep five minutes later. The woman farted. The wife farted. She said, tie game, 7-7. Seven seven. So the man thought about it. He said, well, this is game on. He farted again. He said, touchdown. I'm up 14-7. Five minutes later went by. She farted. She said, tied up again, 14-14. So the old man knew that this thing was close back and forth. He tried to squeeze one out, doesn't come out. All of a sudden, the woman squeaked one out. She said, field goal, 17-14. So the old man said, you know what, I'm not going to get beaten by my wife, especially in football. So he squeezed, and he squeezed, and he shit in his pants. And the woman said, oh, what was that? He said, halftime, time to switch sides. <laughs> so that's just a story I wanted to tell you to begin with. If you look up here, offensive uh, statistics and information, we've been no huddle for the past two years. Uh, we've been wanting to do no huddle for a long time. A uh, couple of things that we picked up, uh, we, feel that we felt like it would be beneficial, especially in 1A football with some of the players going both ways. But we've also been very fortunate at Wallace Rose Hill not to have as many players go both ways. We put our best players on the defensive side of the ball, but we do have a couple of skilled athletes that will play those positions on offense as well. Uh, but a couple of things that we picked up was one, Gus Malzahn's book. And we also go to a, or we went to a uh, wing tee clinic in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and learned a lot about the no huddle system there. Uh, 2014, uh, averaged 43 points a game, 700 points for the second highest scoring team in the state behind Havelock. And then uh, this year, it's supposed to be 2015, 43 points, 700 points. So that's just some offensive statistics. Today, what we're going to be looking at is the speed sweep. Most of you are familiar with the speed sweep. And we do a lot of things under center. But I'll also tell you that everything we do under center, we can also do on the shotgun. We just don't practice it as much because most of the stuff we do comes from under center. And then complementary plays, plays that we run off of the jet sweep. We'll look at the isolation, Sally, and then also the trap. All right? So the first thing we'll look at is the speed sweep. This is just some basic characteristics about it. First thing is you've got to be able to run it from multiple formations. And later on, if we have time, I'll show you different formations. We can run the jet sweep out of any formation that we want to. We try to get four blockers on four, de uh, on four defenders at the point of attack. And the main thing is staying on those blocks. As you know, not one punch and let them off. We also have multiple blocking schemes. I'll show you just the basic schemes that we have today. Sometimes we'll pull the guard. Uh, sometimes we'll keep the guard in, depending on who we're playing. Cracking with your wide receiver putting your fullback in an offset uh, alignment, and then him being a lead blocker, getting in twins and running it. So as you know, there's different formations you can run the jet sweep from, and that's what we do. We have a lot of formation. We don't have a lot of plays, but we can do everything out of a lot of formations. And this also makes defenses have to adjust their alignment to it. The main thing that we work almost every day, and you see on the front page of the handout that I gave you, is working on timing with the quarterbacks and running backs, and we do this every single day. If you look on the front page, there's a speed sweep drill, and I want to go over it real quick. We hardly ever run this at the beginning of the season, 
without the quarterback and center exchange. Timing is very, very important when running a jet sweep. And so we had to see on the front page there, there's a spacing board. And we use spacing boards. I coach the quarterbacks. So I'll take my quarterbacks over at the first part of the individual, and we'll go with the running back coach. And our quarterbacks are on the spacing boards, one of them snapping to the other one. And then unless we have our center down there as well to work on the timing, every running back starts on the left-hand side, and they'll run the jet sweep to the right. Now, if you notice the barrels that are there, we have a barrel or a cone, whatever you want to use, that is about a foot to about two feet behind the quarterback. And this is so that he stays tight to the quarterback when he opens up. We also have another barrel that you see over there, because in a minute we're going to talk about setting the edge and circling the field, that when the running back is coming by the quarterback and he takes the handoff, that he bellies back around the barrel so that he can circle the field and see the blocks. You know, it's hard sometimes, not the gun, you can see it as well because you're already back there running it. But it's hard, and we've noticed it is, if I'm running the jet sweep from under center and I get it, and I've got to make a cut, unless you just got a really good athlete, it's hard for him to see those blocks. And we learned this at the Wayne T Clinic. Now when he gets it from the quarterback and he bellies back, now I can see if I need to stay wide and circle the field, or if we had to kick it and cut it up underneath, because every time it's going to be different. So we work the speed sweep drill every day with the quarterback, with the running backs, and also with the center. And if you notice this right here, it says the jet sweeps like a long jump. To have a great long jump, the jumper must hit the mark every time. If not, he's going to be off. Same thing with the jet sweep. There's markers that you've got to try to hit every time, and those are the things we're going to talk about, about snapping it on time. Snapping it on time is very, very important. If not, if you don't snap it on time, the play's not going to develop. If you snap it too late, it's not going to develop like it needs to develop. Quarterback play. Quarterback, like I said, as soon as he takes the snap from under center, he's going to what we call open the door and get his butt in A-gap. Lateral step will help him complete a better 180 degree pivot. And it also takes him off the midline, which we'll talk about the trap those things in a minute. Quarterback's backs to the line of scrimmage, and I tell our quarterbacks that when they open up, it is very important to pin the ball to the midsection. And it's like they're dealing cards. And when black uniforms on, we play at home, a lot of coaches will say it's hard to see the ball if you're faking properly and doing those things that you're taught an individual. So we want him to get his butt in a gap. We want him to snap the ball when the running back gets to the outside leg of the guard. And in the clips that I have, you'll see sometimes our quarterback snaps it too soon. Even working this drill every day, we don't, we don't do it perfect, right? Sometimes he snaps it too soon. Sometimes he snaps it too late. But I can also tell you this is a drill that we've done every day that has helped our timing. And the pivot's made in full speed. And when he opens up, he wants to bring the ball to the midsection with his elbows in tight. Shoulders should be slightly bent over your knees, feet about one foot apart. Snap the ball, like I said, when the ball carrier gets to the outside leg of the guard. And we also want the handoff to be made in A-gap. Do not reach to make the handoff. Sometimes our running backs, even working that drill with the barrel there, and we put that there so they stay tight. Because if he comes back here and he's not on his alignment, and the running back and the quarterback opens up, now he's having to reach for it. And he gets it on his hip, and he misses the handoff. Tell our quarterbacks it's your responsibility to get the running back to the ball. Running back can't run with his eyes down looking at the handoff. Quarterback's job is to look it in every time. After making the handoff, the other plays that we run, like I was telling you about, is the fullback trap, the isolation, and we also have play action passing game off of it. And we run this play on first down about every time. Don't have to. You can work it on second down, third down, whatever your cadence is. But we like to run it on first down, especially get up the ball, bang it real quick. And when the handoff is made on the midline, the play is too slow. If he hands it off too early, don't give it time to develop. We also tell this happened uh, one time last year. If the quarterback misses the handoff, to keep it right back where the play is designed. Because you've got your running back now. He's missed the handoff. He's an extra blocker out there even though it didn't develop like it was supposed to. All right? So that's just basic quarterback play. Running back play, we work a lot with running speed sweep. We can do it out of what we call 1 in 900, but we, lot of, we do it a lot out of deuce, where we have a half back up and a wing back up, double wing set, that's all it is. We tell our running backs they're two by two alignment. So if I'm facing right here and here's my tackle and my tight end, we're going to take two steps back and we're going to take two right here. And our wing backs are square. We used to angle them, but since we started running the jet sweep a long time ago, before I even started coaching, we have them square. So now they can reach off easier, or if we run the buck sweep, they can down block easier. 
Speed sweep by running back play, and you can see this also in the sheet. I got the alignment of the blocking schemes that we use. He's going to block the number two defender when he's on the line of scrimmage. And we tell him to aim for a one-yard spot to his outside shoulder. We want to take off as soon as the ball is snapped, the blocking running back, and get to number two defender's outside shoulder as fast as he can get there. We don't want him to penetrate up the field and clog the play up before he even has time to develop. So we work this with a bag drill. We have what I call a bag drill. We have all our running backs in a line. And we have the other running backs, they'll rotate, holding the bag when I'm blocking. So we'll say reach left. They'll step, reach left, throw their flipper, and then work their hands. Come back, reach right, step, reach right, work my hips around. The main thing with blocking is to work your butt and hips around and stay on the block. Don't get there in one punch and let them go. Very important in circling the field and setting the edge that our running backs become great blockers. And we tell them, okay, how many yards you run for. It's about blocking and ball faking that makes these things possible. The yards are going to come. But what we don't want to do when blocking is not allow number two to penetrate up the field. Because when we pull our play side guard and penetration is up the field, because he didn't get to number two, now the play's clogged up and the running back has nowhere to go. Ball carrier, our halfback. His hands also are resting slightly on his knees, slightly bent. Snaps on first sound usually. We use kick foot like most of you do when the quarterback kicks his foot. It's when speed sweep drill comes into play, he's aiming for that one foot spot behind the quarterback's butt. So when we tell him to run, off the quarterback's butt and between that barrel, visually in the game, that's what he's focusing on is that speed sweep drill that we've instilled in his mind all week long. This is a full speed play. If you take a speed sweep handoff slope, Play's not going to develop. Can't worry about the handoff, can't worry about any of those things. He's got to be full speed every single time. I had a running back one time, got his name after him, as he ran it like that, a jog sweep. This is not a jog sweep. It's got to be full speed every time where the play is not going to work. So many times I see teams that are running a jet sweep, taking off so slow and they're stopping at the quarterback. Now they get the handoff, now the blocking's already messed up. It's got to be full speed every time. That's why I told you the timing between the quarterback and center and the running back snapping it when he gets to the outside leg of the guard is very, very important. Cannot take off slowly when running this play worried about a handoff. When the quarterback puts the ball in the pocket, now we teach our running back when he's coming across to make a pocket, right arm pocket, left arm pocket. Some teach to take it with the hand and then turn it over to their outside arm. We teach pocket, make sure he gets it to his outside hip. After receiving the handoff, again, jet sweep drill comes into play. I've got my handoff and now i got a belly back so that I can see and so that I can circle the field. Very important to do that. And in the fullback's alignment, we tell him to keep his toes at four and a half yards from the ball. It's also, like I said, it depends on the, on the kids that you got. Uh, we had three great running backs this year, best I've ever been around. But this also varies based on the speed of your fullback. And like I said, we can put our fullback in a K call. Where we all set him to the left behind the tackle. We can put him in a T call where we all set him to the right behind the tackle. We can still run isolation, sally, trap, and jet sweep that way. It just gives you an extra blocker. <clears throat> Fullback, he can fake the trap or iso off the speed. Uh, he's faking the trap, you know, he hit it straight up the midline. Uh, iso fake, we tell him to go over the outside leg of the guard. So if I'm the quarterback and I'm opening up an A gap and I give the speed sweep fake, I also have the fullback running the midline, or I step up and I fake an isolation off of it. One of those two things. And like I told you, we can offset the fullback as well to use him as an extra blocker. Offensive line play. Tell our center, uh, if he's uncovered, to reach block to the play side guard. Sometimes tell him to cut the inside leg of a one, two, or three technique or reach using your hands again. Make sure I get my head, my butt, my hips in the hole. Uh, get in the way of stop penetration of the field. One thing that we notice is, the, and obviously this is in any play, when you're running it, is to try to attack at the point of attack and stop that penetration up the field. If he's covered versus like a 50 look, rip and reach to the play side, looking for the outside linebacker, and all those things are in the packet that I gave you as well. We only block the nose if he crosses face. So if he's slanting the motion, it's the only time we're going to touch him. We're not touching anybody on the back side, they can't make the play. One to a seven technique, we're not touching them. They cannot make the play, everybody on the back side's reaching and running to the cutoff. <coughs> Play side guard, and like I told you, this depends week to week on our scheme. Sometimes we'll pull him flat and key the tackles block on number one. He has the number one defender, unless we're running it to the tight end side. If the number one defender is hooked or stunts inside, he's going to turn up and look inside and look for the linebacker. Or the first thing, we, or the first thing that appears is what we tell him. He wants to keep his eyes inside and feel the block on number one. 
And like I said, depending on who we're playing, sometimes we won't even pull the play side guard because of penetration. Sometimes everybody just reaches off and runs. First thing, head up the outside. Play side tackle. Like I told you earlier, the running back has number two defender. He's going to block the number one defender. And all that's in the packet. When you cover with a 4 5 technique, try to get your inside pad or forearm to his outside for leverage and hook him as quick as possible. Do not allow the defender to penetrate up the field. Because, like I told you, when we do pull our guards, it keeps him from getting out and it clogs the play up. And if he slants inside, stay on your track, you're already in place, and get to the linebacker. Backside lineman. So if we're running speed sweep to the right, our backside guard, our backside tackle will pull and scoop block a defender that crosses their face. Their job is to run to the cutoff. We're touching nobody on the backside. Also, and this is just a little coaching point that I got at a Herschel Moore's wing tee book, when you're running the speed sweep, you can use a different blocking scheme to keep the defense honest. So we might be running speed sweep to the split inside, and we're not touching those defenders anyway because they can't make the play. So when we're opening up and giving that handoff in A gap, you might be blocking isolation over here. You might be blocking Sally. You might be blocking the counter. You may pull them opposite where the speed sweep's going. So we may run jet sweep to the left. They may be pulling to the right. So this is just to keep defenses honest and if they're reading those things as their keys. Wide receiver, a couple of things you can do uh, that we do. Stop blocking, obviously, is very important, setting the edge. Or also, we can use a crack block. And if we're running the speed sweep to the tight end side, his job is to reach number one, the first thing, head up the outside. If not, plays away from him. With the other lineman, he's running to the backside cutoff. All right? Questions about speed sweep. But like I said, we also do this out the shotgun and work on timing, too. Does you change your splits at all? No, our splits stay the same. Uh, usually we have two foot splits. Now if we're running the trap or split the trap or isolation, uh, we may shorten the splits down or widen them depending on who we're playing and what type of schemes that they're playing. But most of the time we have two foot splits. And what about, uh, uh, you need to tell them about how you stop people from penetrating on the first sound? Oh uh, yeah, uh, in talking about stopping penetrating on the first sound, uh, we hit, and obviously some of you probably use, we have dummy checks. So, you know, and it's very, very beneficial to us. So they can't catch your timing because we do a lot of stuff on first sound. You know, so if we have a dummy call and we kick him in motion, the quarterback barks, go, 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 and he keeps him on us. So now he goes back, we can dummy him again, go, go, go. And you're no huddle, you're on the ball so quick, you're checking the, when we're motioning, we're checking the defense, what they're doing. And we may do that three times in a row. We're not just going to do it once. You want to get on the ball so quick, and that's why the no huddle has helped us so much. Especially being wing T offense with a lot of misdirection and using a lot of motion. We're just doing it from under center. Now when the quarterback's barking and he's kicking him and all of a sudden he's going, they think speed sweep's coming and he motions back. Then we may kick the wing back, motion him. We may offset the fullback, bark it again. So those are things that we do to keep them honest from timing it a lot of times. And that's been very, very beneficial to us. But you got a call for that. Yeah, we have a call. Uh, yeah, so the whole we'll, offense knows. Yeah, the whole offense knows. So, you know, for example, uh, it might be Texas, Rangers, or Cowboys. All those things are used together. Texas, Rangers, Cowboys, they know if he hollers, Texas, Texas, Gators, Gators, go, go, go. That's a dummy check because Texas was in it. Or he gets up there next time so they can't pick you. Rangers, Rangers, 28-7, 28-7, kicks him, go, go, go. That's the dummy check. They heard it. So the no huddle makes sense to us because we use our language. Might not make sense to you if I explain our stuff that you do, but as long as it makes sense to you and your kids, then that's the most important thing. They know our dummy calls are our dummy calls. If they went somewhere else and listened to theirs, it wouldn't make sense to them, and that's okay. We're not coaching other people's teams. We're about what we can do and what we can understand. Stances so, of, who, the stances of your linemen, are you got your tackles up or they're down? They're down. Everybody's down. Everybody's down. Mm -hmm. All right, isolation. This right here, ball faking and time is very important. And you're going to see some film clips in a little bit where our running backs, like everybody has them, they're supposed to ball fake, and they take two steps, and they want to go see the play. But ball faking and time, and we do teach it, is very, very important. Because we want to make it look like speed sweeps coming every time to freeze those linebackers, or those safeties if they're running the alley. So what we work, and you can see this also in the packet, is an isolation drill. So we have what we call a run pass period for 10 minutes. Uh, my daddy and our running back coach, they'll go coach the offensive line and the running backs. I'll take the receivers and other running backs, and I'll take them 10 minutes, and we work a pass period. 
and then we'll flip. We'll flip players. Allow them to stay down there. So I'm working the ISO drill on the individual run pass period. Take a guard, a tackle, and our halfback. And we want to work on timing and quickness. Snapping the ball on time is important. So we'll work what we call a no-call, where it's down, turn out. Or what we also call a tom block, which is tackle first, or what you may refer to it as a cross block, where they're cross blocking. All right? Same thing with the quarterback play, snapping the ball when the jet back gets to the outside leg of the guard because what we want to make it look like again, gets to the outside leg of the guard, I've opened up, my butt's down, quarterback's got to pin to his midsection, I'm going to throw my hand, but I also keep the ball pinned to my midsection, I don't want to stick it out. If I stick it out and fake it to the jet back, it's liable to hit his hip and fumble the ball. So a quarterback handling the ball in wing T offense and hiding is very important. So when he's out, his butt's open up in A gap, and I'm faking that jet, and that running back's ball fake down the field. He's holding up for the speed, back, speed fake with the ball pinned to the midsection. Like I said, do not stick the ball out in the jet back's belly from under center. Now, I know with the shotgun stuff, with the pot, that's a little bit different, but that's not what we do. Pin the ball to the midsection with one hand, and I've got it faked with my other hand. Quarterback reverses out, like I told you, in an A gap, well over the midline. Once the jet back crosses and the fake is made, so once I've opened up and I've faked it, i got the ball grip, I'm stepping right here and I'm giving the isolation between the guard and tackle. And our halfback, I mean our fullback, we teach him a different way of taking a path to it. We also learn this in running isolation. Not induced. If our halfback's down and he's leading up on the isolation, we used to tell our fullbacks to take a side step and get in the hole. Well, we found out that he don't have enough time to read that because when he's sidestepping, he's going, he's on his butt crack, and he has no time to let the block develop. Learned this at the Wing T Clinic. And it takes them about two or three days to get the hang of it in the game. They do it without even thinking. So we teach them if they're down, sidestep, crossover, shoulders are square. Now i got time for that halfback to really isolate that linebacker instead of just sidestep, now I'm in the hole, and I'm having to read which way to go real quick. So that was a coaching point that we liked was to teach sidestep, crossover, my eyes are up. Running backs feeling with their eyes, not with their feet, the best of them that I've seen. No running backs feeling with their feet, it's with their eyes. So I got my eyes up, ball's in here, now I got more time to read the block after the quarterback sticks it in the belly. Running back playing the jet back, his job is when he's kicked off, take off full speed. We want the defense to think that speed sweep is coming, make the outside linebacker check. And so when he's coming, he's ball faking, he's folded over all the way down the field. And like I said, you're not going to see many of our running backs. We tell them ball fake 10, 15 yards down the field, let them stop the five. But when we go back and watch tape, they see how important it is. Stay ball fake down the field, make it look like speed sweep. Halfbacks alignment, the blocking back. For this play, we tell them that you can't, defenses can't recognize it, cheat back a half step. So when the guard and the tackle are making their block, whether it's a straight up or a cross block, he's going to sidestep, and now he's got time to get into the hole. We don't teach him to go around the tackle unless we have a jam call. Most of the time, it's a sidestep, the block is developed, now I'm through the hole to the linebacker with my eyes up. And then the running back's block is uh, key on the linebacker. If he misses that, and that's a free shot on the fullback. Snapping the ball, the halfback's going to take a sidestep. I just told you that between the guard and the tackle. Uh, fullback, like I told you, we started teaching the sidestep crossover, shoulder square to the hole, and that is to give more time for the play to develop. When it take off full speed, fullback can't take off slow and make it a pocket. He can't look down and get the handoff. Those are all little things that we know. And like I tell we tell our running backs to run with your eyes, not with your feet. So running backs can see the holes and visually make those cuts when they need to make it, not with their feet. Offensive line play, play side guard. What we use is a no call, that means man on. They're not going to make a call up front. We want to open up B gap. So our guards are the ones that make the calls, not our tackles. We also have what we call, and this is an easy terminology I didn't come up with, is a time block. First time I ever heard it was from Coach Holly and then from my daddy. A time block just tells the tackle he's going first. So we'll cross block, or what we call a time block, and you can use any language that you want to. Turkey, Texas, whatever. Cross block a three and a five technique, and sometimes, like I told you, schemes are different. Uh, sometimes, depending on who we're playing, uh, you know, those circles and those X's and those don't make the plays. The players on the field do. You know, it's easy to sit there and block uh, somebody that's five foot and 150 pounds. You've got somebody now that's 6'2, 275 pounds. So, circles and the X's, you know, that's easy. We're talking about blocking people on the actual field. So those blocking schemes may change. You may be able to get away with it against one team, but you may not be able to get away with it against a better team. 
So if we get a one three technique, sometimes also we'll call jam and let the running back, he knows the bounce and go one hole wider. And again, we let the guards call it. Sometimes our tackles will take charge and, and tell them what to do, but we feel if our guards call it because they're the ones that are pulling a lot, um, then it's not a lot of confusion about what well, the tackle did this and the guard did this, so we let our guards call it on both sides. Play side tackle. No call is man on. We're going to try to open up B gap, B gap and get the isolation hole. So speed back's coming. We're going to fake the speed. We're going to give it to the fullback, hoping to freeze the linebacker, and then run it up underneath. And a lot of times you'll see this play when we have time to get to the clips. They'll cut out the back door because everybody's flowing with the speed sweep. That's why the ball fake is important. Center, his job is to reach play side A gap, try to stop the defensive line from slanting the motion because a lot of teams that we play, we use a lot of motion, misdirection, when it's slant to our motion. Stop penetration, try to get to the cutoff. Same thing, same thing for the backside guard. Reach backside A gap, stop, stop slanting teams to a slanting the motion. Try to stop penetration up the field and run to the cutoff because penetration, like you know, causes confusion up front and blows the play up. Backside tackle, reach play side B gap, stop slanting penetration and then run to the cutoff. Tight end, same thing, run to the cutoff. And we can also run the isolation to the tight end side. I didn't put it up here. We use a different type of motion to get to it if they're giving us that hole. All right? Questions on isolation? Coach, you, you still block isolation versus a, a odd versus a three, four with a zero and four eyes? Uh-huh. How, how do you block that? Well, well sometimes, it, all right, let's say the true three, four. Yeah, true three, four is okay, zero, uh, two, four eyes. Yeah, a lot of times, um, inside, Tell me about four eyes. I used a four. I'm not familiar yeah, with four eyes. Slight inside shaded offensive tackle. Slight inside shaded offensive tackle. Uh, sometimes, uh, like I said, we use a jam call, and we'll just jam that down, and then tell our halfback to go outside the tackle's butt, and we know we're going to run it one whole wider. Okay. Is that right? Is he power? Is he going to power step me most of the time, or is he going to pinch hard? Mm -hmm. oh, we know that by the second play of the game. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, if you're a pinching, this is what I tell our line. By the second play, you better know if he's a hard pinch or if he's or, or he's trying to power step back to you all the time, or if he's trying to read a guard's hat. Well, if you're just in a four eye, and what do you got outside of him? The outside linebacker. Depends on what you is got. Is he walking or is he up on the line of scrimmage? Depends on if you got a tight end or if it's open. We ain't got no tight end. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if you're gonna be walked side. out there like a walk linebacker, yeah, like a walk nine, yeah. then, then we'll just take that tackle on down and pull around and go get that outside backer. And uh, they'll call jam, and then the halfback, and now we got the halfback, and we got the guard out there on your outside backer. Okay. And we're gonna let the center reach off play side A and try to cut your middle linebacker off. Okay. If you play it in a four-three or some kind of three-three or some kind of configuration like that, we're never gonna worry about the backside except that backside tackle right. tries to run us down from the backside sometimes because it takes a second to get in there. So sometimes that happens. But now if you're gonna play an A gap player on us. We're just going to call jam. So if you were to like walk a linebacker up and gap on the play side, we're just going to call jam, try to hit it one hole wider and get what we can get out of it. If, that, if you got that four eye. Uh, and, and if not, then uh, what we're going to do is just keep running sweep, trap, ISO to it until you miss. you got to miss one place. You can't keep doing it unless you're just that good like James Keenan. They can knock it down like that sometimes because we've played each other enough. Because that's what they do. They play a one, then they get in that hole, then they got an outside backer, and that thing gets hard then if they hold their ground. And you can't get them moving. And so you got to go somewhere else. You can't just stay there doing that. But against a three and a five, we're going to tie, we're going to cross block that thing. And you hope your backer runs on that jump thing and yeah. get in that hallway every time. Okay, we're well talking about the, the, the three and a five. I'm saying if, you gotta, if you're, you're trying to get your center up on the, the, the play side, 30 backer. If you got yeah, to, yeah, you got well, I mean, zero. he's going to try it. Now, if you put a nose on him, He's going to rip to his inside and hold if he's a, if he slant, he got to hold his ground. Okay. But any other time, he's just going to try to rip off. If he goes away, good enough. Go get in the linebacker. Backside guard, he's going to run through the backside A gap, go get the backer, tackle same way. If you're not slanting to our motion, right. we don't care then. We just yeah. want to get linebackers. Okay. We call that we call that running to the cutoff. We want to run to the cutoff to get in front of that ball carrier if we can. Okay. Yeah, because crossing the space makes it tough. If they, if they penetrate from the backside running at us, yeah, well, they can get hard. to that fullback sometimes if you're good up front. 
Now, if you got some old big fat kid back there, you ain't getting one. Right. You know, a lot of people like y'all, y'all got them people fast enough that if you slant to the motion, you can get to that full back from the backside sometime. Okay. Thank All right. you. All right, Sally. Uh, just some things about Sally. Sally's a misdirection play. Ball fake is very important. So basically, Sally is a play off the speed sweep fake and off the isolation fake. This is a play right here where you do not want to get in a hurry and let the play develop because the speed back has to go by and ball fake, the jet sweep. The fullback has to come through and, and fake the, uh, the isolation fake, and I have all those things drawn up uh, in the packet that I gave you. The hole opening here, and this is what we tell our running backs because it's not going to hit the same every time. The hole opening can be from A gap to C gap. That's why we always tell them to run with your eyes, not with your feet, so that you can see the hole. Like I told you, blocking schemes, sometimes we change them from week to week, depending on the defense alignment, but really and truly it's depending on the type of personnel that you have. Uh, this is either, to tell you the truth, it's either going to be a big play or no play. And I should have put some of the clips up here. We got hit in the backfield, and everybody comes to the clinic, and I got them too. But we show our best plays, 50-yard touchdown runs, 70-yard touchdown runs. And I was going to put those no gains in there, but I didn't. But a lot of times we run this play, we got no gain. And then sometimes we run it, we get a 50-yard gain. So, you know, that's just clinic video. I'm always going to show the good stuff, not the bad stuff. But we get hit in the backfield a lot too. Handling the ball right here for the quarterback is very, very important because he's got to make two fakes. Ball must be snapped on time. Like I told you with the speed sweep, it's got to be snapped when the running back gets to the outside leg of the guard. So we want to make it look initially to the linebackers and to the defense like speed sweep's coming. That's the first thing. After the jet fake is made and the defense recognizes it, now we're going to fake the isolation to the fullback. So now they think isolation is coming. Very important to put the ball in the fullback's belly to lineback. So you'll see, and I'll talk about him in a minute, quarterback play, and you'll see him hand the ball off. When he's opening up, again, I'm open up, but in A-gap, I'm faking the speed. I'm stepping around. I'm riding it in the fullback's belly. Linebackers think isolation's coming. All right, so that's the first part of the play. I'm open up, but in A-gap, speed sweep's gone. Now i got to step up, and i got to fake the isolation. That play's gone. Quarterback pulls it. Third step off the ISO fake to the fullback. He's going to step towards the halfback. Now, there's different ways that we teach our halfbacks that I'll get to in a minute. So when the quarterback's faking the speed, he's stepping around faking the ISO. He's going to now bring the ball to the halfback. And like I said, this is a misdirection play. This is a really good play against teams that do like to get up the field because this play is designed to cut right up underneath them. It's very similar to a draw play. Quarterback's not supposed to reach to make the handoff. Again, I want to work on that mesh and that timing from the quarterback to the running back. All right, running back play. Wingback's job is very simple. He's taking off full speed when the quarterback kicks him. He's faking speed sweep down the field. He's going to come in front of the halfback to avoid collision. This is very, very important. Now, like I told you earlier, when our halfbacks get it and they belly back that yard, that's so they can circle the field and so they can see the blocking. Well, this time when we run Sally, and they know it, and you can't even recognize it on tape, defense, you know, it's hard to tell when it's coming because we're not consistent enough running the speed every time to do it perfect every time, you know, we teach it. This time when he fakes the speed, he's staying straight, and he's just running down the field to fake the speed sweep. Because the halfback, a couple of ways that we teach it on Sally, he can backpedal out, stick his right plant foot, and then he's getting north and south between A and C gap. Or after the speed fake's gone, isolation fake's gone, another way of teaching it is I'm going to open up, cross over, plant my foot, and then I'm down the hill when the quarterback brings the ball. And it's the inside handoff. All right, so it's either back pedal. Running back wants to make his plant when the quarterback comes off the fullback's ride. Like I said, this is a developing play. It can't be in a hurry to get to it. It's got to have time to develop. So when he's back pedaling, he's sticking his foot. My eyes are up. I see the hole. And you'll see on here, sometimes we hit it in A gap, sometimes we hit it in C gap. Or, I'm open up here, I'm going to plant, when he comes off the quarterback's ride, now I'm full speed north and south. So that's the halfback's job. This play, you can run it to the wingback side. Lots of times, though, we run it to the halfback. <laughs> Running back play. Halfback, like I said, snap the ball, he's taking a jab step back with his inside foot. He's going to cross over, he's going to pivot back, and then he's running at that bowed path. When the quarterback comes off that ride, and we let our running backs use either technique, whichever one feels comfortable to them. Offensive line play, and you'll see it again. I've got it drawn up in the packet um, against the 50 and against the 4-4 because we see a lot of 4-4 with wing tape. Lots of teams start running 4-4 against us. 
Well, I've got it drawn up in the packet. Sally Block as well. Tight end. He's going to pass set number three. And I got the numbering system in there as well. Pass set number three, and he runs to clear the outside linebacker. Play side tackle is going to pass set number two and run the block the middle linebacker. And again, this is in the packet. Play side guard. He's going to pass set number one. He's going to stay hooked up all the way up the field with his defensive tackle. And really, we tell the running back to read that guard's block. So the tight end is going to pass that pass set. He's up the field. I got to go sprint and clear the outside linebacker. Play side tackle. He's going to pass set number two, pass set, and he's up the field. Middle linebacker. Play side guard stays hooked up. But like I told you, it's not a good play against teams that don't like to get up the field. Teams that like to get up the field, we're going to pass set them up the field and then go. Center's going to run block a zero head up to the backside A gap. Backside guard's going to run block number one and two. And we run block on the backside, like I told you, to make it look like isolation's coming on the backside. So when the quarterback is faking that speed, faking that ISO, we're run blocking with the backside guard and backside tackle to make it look like isolation's coming to give the play side tackle and the play side tight end time to pass that their guys up the field and go clear those linebackers. And it gives the play time to develop. And like I told you, this is either a big game or no game. Well, he's talking about number one and number two. That might be confusing to you, but I teach that part of it. What I do is I tell them from the center over, we're going to count one. So whoever won, if you walk a backer up, he becomes one. We've got to make it not happen. Uh, so we count one, two, no matter what configuration of defense that makes the lineman easy to recognize. I can count one, two. Most of them can anyway. But I can count one, two. And so they know they got to take care of number one and number two no matter what when they're run blocking. Uh, you just come off and run block number one and number two. The center's job is to make sure uh, that, that that nose guard goes to, to the run side what we're faking run. If that guy tries to go the other way, well, he's got to hang on and stay hooked up and hope that running back can read it out. If you've got a nose guard that's pretty tough to handle, we can change one, two, but we don't hardly ever do that. Uh, if, you, if he was that good, we'd probably not run seven. But what I'm saying is when that, when that guard on the other side, if he's got a two technique, a three technique, or any of that, he's got to make sure that guy gets set up the field somehow. But now if you put a one technique on the play side where he's supposed to pass it, well now that becomes a combo block or he just jams him down. Then the tackle will block one, the tight end will change his to number two. And we'll try to open the hole that way. So that's what we're talking about. When we say one, two, we're counting people. That's all it is, one, two, one, two. And if the backers will stay back, that, that's perfect. When the linebackers don't come, that becomes the perfect setup to call it like that. So you're blocking Go ahead. Center out. Yeah, from the center, he's center zero. You've got an A-gap player. Though. If you put me an A-gap to the run side, the center's going to take him that way. The center's got him. And if you put me a, like a 6-2, and you put me an A-gap on the other side, well, guess what? That guard's going to take him that way. Now the tackle's going to block number two. He's going to stay past set up the field, and the tight end's going to pass set and go get the back because you only got one left <coughs> unless you send them. You don't count that A-gap. No, no, we no, we count him. He's not a nose because you got two A gap players. Not one. Do I know? He's not the number one. Yeah, he becomes yeah, number one. one. Yeah, he three becomes three number one, one now on that side. The only way we call a zero is if you're straight up nose. Yes. Everybody else is either one, two. And so it's easy for my lineman to count it that way. They can count one, two. And if you send everybody else, guess what? We're just going to call jam, get what we can get out of it, and be done with it. And take that, take that. Uh, kicking right there. That's what he said. It don't go every time. But if we catch you running up the field, uh, then that's when it works the best is when Sally's best on a, a third down and long. Yeah. It's a great third down and long play when everybody thinks you're fixing to do something different. Go ahead. All right, Trent, just the last part of the complimentary plays. Uh, quick hitting play. Again, make sure you snap the ball on time. Uh, fullback. He runs with his eyes here, reading the guards, and we also have a put in there a trap drill that we use with the center and the two guards. Different ways of trapping it. Uh, usually, we're going to trap the first thing past the center, depending on what type of player he is. We also have another call, what we call an 88 call. Well, we're going to trap the second man past the center, but like I said, it depends on what type of player he is, based on scheme and alignment. Uh, we work the trap drill in run pass period. You can also use your quarterback, but a lot of times, you know, we'll have a coach standing there because, you know, we have players split up and run pass period until we rotate. Uh, and they're just working on trapping it quick with the center and the two guards and working those calls. 
and we use the fullback in that little five minute period so that he can see the guard's block. He just, uh, right off the butt of the guard when he makes that trap block so that he knows to get in what we call the funnel. We want him to get behind the wall and get in the funnel. All right, looking at the quarterback play first. Again, under center, ball must be snapped on time, and we can do this in the gun. I also have a clip of us doing it in the shotgun. Ball must be snapped when the running back reaches a gap. So when he comes right here, very important that a quarterback opens up again, gives up the midline, because now he's going to slide the ball in there for the trap, right in his belly. Open the door, butt in a gap. Keep the ball pinned to the midsection. Like I told you, I want to open up, stick out the jet fake, and we fumble it. I want to keep it pinned, fake here, and I'm giving here. It's like I'm dealing cards. I'm going to fake here and give here. Proximity fake to the jet back. Really, the jet back's job is come by. He's going to fold like he's got it. Stay ball fake down the field. Again, the quarterback's back is to the line of scrimmage, making it hard to see. Uh, handoff should be made at forearm length to the fullback. And that's the simple quarterback play. Main thing is that he looks the ball into the fullback's belly. Sometimes, especially early in the year, if the fullback will make a good pocket, or he's not looking it in, he's looking up about what's going on, and he just tries to slide it in there. Halfback, take off full speed when the quarterback keeps you in motion. Stay ball fake down the field. You can run this with halfback motion or wing speed are what we call our four back. We number our backs. We have a two back, a three back, and a four back. Our three backs are full back. Two back is the half back. Four back is the wing back. And we can jet fake either one of them. Full back, he's going to snap the ball, dive to the center's butt. He's going to take an inside handoff at full speed and look to get in the funnel. So I was telling you about timing. When the jet back comes, he can't slow down. He's got to take off full speed because now the fullback at four and a half yards, he's taking the handoff at full speed, looking to get off the guard's trap block and get in that funnel. That's why running with your eyes is very important so that he can see the clearing of the linebackers too. And then the wing back's going to release downfield to the middle third defender. Not going to touch the defensive end at all. Offensive line. Uh, in the even front, he's going to block back. In the odd front, we're going to block man on. Pulling guard, whichever corner, the left guard or the right guard. Like I said, we're going to trap the first thing past the center. Sometimes, like I told you, we'll trap the second man. We have an 88 call where if he's playing in one technique, we'll double him out of there and then trap the second man past the center. And our fullback has to know that. That's why we work it in the trap drill. Can't just get in the game and they make an 88 call and he knows we're going to trap it one whole wider because now when he gets it, he's going to have to wrap it up in there instead of hitting it straight like against the even front where he stays straight up the midline. Uh, run through the defenders, what we tell our guards, don't leave your feet in the hole. Um, in the even front, he's going to the linebacker, odd front, most time we're going to combo to the linebacker with the center to make sure that, that one technique gets out of the way because he can blow the play up obviously. Offensive line, backside tackle, try to tell them to feel for the pulling guard and then run to the cutoff. Play side tackle is going to the linebacker, the tight end is going to the linebacker to create that wall, and that's in the handout that I gave you. Uh, and in the process, when the tackle and the tight end are going to those linebackers, and there's the trap, there's the wall or the funnel that we tell our fullback to get in and run behind that funnel. Lots of times, though, our fullback will not run with his eyes up, he keeps it down. And all of a sudden, he don't see the trap block. And you see on tape a lot of times, we tell ours, there's the trap block, there's the funnel. For some reason, he's running to the guard. So that's why we try to work that drill a lot so they get a habit of seeing that block and seeing that funnel. All right, and real quick, I have uh, just some highlights you can see. Speed sweeps first, and then it goes to the isolation, and Sally, uh, and then trap. And you know, usually when I go to a clinic and I see College coaches and other coaches tell us, man, I wish we had that quarterback, he could do that, and I wish that that running back we had to do that. Well, we've had good players, but this is probably the fastest back that we ever had. And you're going to see some runs on here that ain't got nothing to do with coaching. They're just freaking players making plays. And we had three of them in the backfield that could do it. <clears throat> the first part of speed sweep, they'll go through it. Very important to circle the field. And you'll see him circling the field, circle the field, stay on your block, stay on your block. And we want to get four to five yards on speed sweep. Now, our running backs sometimes get disappointed because they don't do what he just did. But we want to, make, we want to get four to five yards on the speed sweep. That's good. Four to five yards every time is good. That's the fullback offset. Now, snapped a little too early, but stayed on blocks good enough to give it time to develop. And then there he is circling the field.
Same thing, you got the gun. Stay on your block, circle the field, circle the field. And the rest is just, he does what he does. And that's what we tell them. Once they circle the field, do what you do. If the kick with the fullback and the offset, look. And then it's just do what you do. That ain't no coaching. Belly back, crack, kick with the fullback. That's the different type of blocking scheme I was saying. With crack run that back so they can see that. Can you run that back? You'll see the wide receiver come across there. We don't do that all the time. Or you can't do it because it's so folded up. You see, he's going to come to set the edge right there. That's the fullback and offset T call. Just a different way of blocking it. That's the tight end from the back side trying to get him out the back door if he cuts. <clears throat> again out the gun uh, we work that too we don't do much out the gun but we do work on time and that's when we couldn't get to his outside shoulder with the wing back he's blocking number two so we tell him if you can't get to him and hook him and he's slanting that way go ahead and kick him and cut underneath there's the hook <clears throat> seal Pull back This one he just cut up son. I don't know what he was doing, but it worked out. Like I said that ain't no coaching. Seal, kick with the fullback, there's the cut, that's in the offset call again. And like I said, there's different formations and blocking schemes that we run it from. And that's why I support a circle field so they can see those blocks most of the time, not all the time. Or why we tell them anyway. Coach, that five technique is so wide, the tight end can't reach them. Tight end's got to help Tight end's got to help them with them. They got to recognize they that. They do the open side, too. Our halfback, the halfback has to go get them. Yeah. Or we put our fullback, like I said, in the offset K comp, and then we got another lead blocker out there. Coach, I don't think it's been fast said. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's say that we got our fullback. We're what we call deuce one. And we got our fullback, we can offset him here, we can offset him here. Right? So we can still run the jet this way with him leading out. We can also run fake speed this way, back back, and then trap back underneath. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. We can also fake the jet, and we can still run the isolation here with them two. And we can also still run Sally off of it. So even though we all set him, he's not lead blocking every time, just because we all set him. You can run the buck sweep out of you that. You can run the buck sweep fake here and run the buck back with the full back. your backside guard. Yeah. But you can run the full back buck right there. You just don't have a field player for your backside guard. As long. Like and you put him in a T call and do the same things. We can run any play we want to run out of that, that formation. It's not automatically going toward the full back. And also, uh, the last two weeks we put in, just because of alignment, a quick pitch just to snap it and get it going quick, because a lot of times we get in that, most people think we all sit here comes speed sweep. But also we put in quick pitch, now they can't slant in motion and bump linebacks and all that, now let's block it up and let's go.